gathering of the boats at Kinvaro, referred to as Crinunamad, is the highlight of all the regattas in the West. The boats arrive on the Friday and stay through to the Monday. And all that time we're amongst friends, we're sailing, we're chatting, discussing, we're playing music. As it's one of the last gatherings of the season, the atmosphere at Canberra is more relaxed than on all the weekends, and the more enjoyable for it. Before I went round to Connemara the first time in 1981 with my boat, I had a preconceived idea of how they might take to me. Someone once said to me that you may have bought the Connacht, but it's not yours. I think I felt like a, an outsider with one of their boats, and I was prepared to believe that they would treat me that way. But since the first day that I arrived in Connemara with the boat, I found nothing but the best of welcomes, generosity, friendliness from them. The resurgence of interest has been so great that new boats have been added to those that have been restored. And they're all been built along strictly traditional lines. At some regattas now, there might be as many as 10 full hookers taking part. The oldest and the newest of the hookers, the Connacht and the Neve marching, tap together, side by side for the night. Sunday morning arrives with a thump. At 6am, someone decides to pull the bliss of solitude tighter to the key, and our two hookers fall over on their bellies. Fortunately, any small damage is easily replaced. And in fact, Parik McLaughlin, skipper of the Neve marching, once he realises what has happened, doesn't even bother to stare from his bunk. Just prior to going out for the race, I tend to get a bit uptight. I feel everything has to be done right. People are watching. And also later on, when we are sailing, I feel responsible for the crew as usual. Joe, pat down and sweat it with As if things aren't bad enough with nerves, we get off to a bad start when the Neve marching falls down on us and puts our bow split in underneath our topping lift. Come on, Ray, get up! I shout a lot to make sure the crew hear, but also I think to relieve my tension. Pull it in, pull it in. I think the crew understand. 
Get him in. And he's sailing, Skelly could improve, surely, that just the same as everybody else, I suppose, but he, he hasn't the boat long enough to be as good as the, the older people here that have them. You know, he's, he's not, he wouldn't be in, in the same class as the older men from Galway here that use the hookers and have made their living on them. He, he would lose his concentration now and again, momentarily, maybe. But he's learning. He's learning. He's improved since, since he got her. I'm an old man, and there's an attraction. We sail a boat, and a traditional boat is, well, in my eyes, it's the only boat to sail. You get a feel for a wooden boat, you know. The thing lives. Plastic doesn't live, you know. It's inert. It's an unknown quantity. Plastic hasn't been around long enough. A wooden boat, they know what they are. They've been around a long time. Man's been sailing since the dawn of creation, and they're still making them. Well, well. Thank God for that. <laughs> Connacht was built purely as a working boat and was not streamlined for racing. She is a very bluff bow. Her water line is also the shortest of all the Colby hookers. And for this reason, we don't do very well in the races. That's my excuse anyway. Ready to go back up into that bay now? Yeah. The race falls into a predictable pattern. American Moor overhauls the Lawads, the half boats which have started ahead of the main fleet, and wins comfortably from the Tony and the Magdara. After early encounters with the Neve Marching and Koppel, we slip back on the homeward leg to our accustomed second last. The Connacht just can't match the speed of the other boats with the wind behind them. Still, we win £60 prize money for efforts, and that helps to subsidise the night ahead. Oh, do miss you, sorry, hi. <laughs> the American Moor has been the boat to beat ever since she arrived on the scene two seasons ago. Tom Darby and his family who own and run the American Moor, must be the most determined competitors on the hooker scene at the moment. When you're out there racing, like, really, uh, there's no such thing as a hobby, like, you're out there to win, and, like, other people might tell you that they're not, but they're, they're lying. If I was beaten tomorrow, like, I'd go to work on my boat again and try to change something and make it faster, like, that, it's competition, like, uh, horse race or any other thing, if it's no good, you get rid of it and get another one. It's not that simple, of course, with the hooker, but you can work at it and try to make it swift. That might be the word I should use. Someone once said to me, you're a great fella in the West. You're accepted by everyone because you're a threat to no one. That's the most important thing to me. I think I would like to do better, but then again, I'm not so sure.